I don't always use ChatGPT, but sometimes I do. ChatGPT or Gemini, just any any AI conversation model if I need help. It's it's supposed to be saved in disk and I'm trying to pull it in to a virtual machine. We have a string that represents an array, but it also ended up taking the brackets. What we're going to do instead is just manually take out the braces and that would naturally make this work. Hello, everybody. Hello, my lovely people. Hope you guys are having a decent day. We're going to continue on some identifiers. It would be nice to check if background tasks work, even if the app is terminated, I should really save the packages that I use. I wonder if there's like pictures or something. Or I can run the example. Move to Android Gradle. I feel like I should be upgrading to the newest Android Gradle, but every time I do it breaks. You know where it said that it would have a notification? Once the flag is enabled, you will receive a notification whenever a background task triggered this way you can oh you know what this is maybe it needs to be on an actual phone so let's try that we have a pixel here that i use for testing we are going to try and see if we can get this to work so we'll connect it to our android we'll see what happens when we background it now we need to pass in data that we want to use the thing is that we can send data over but it doesn't matter what matters is the data that is currently being seen in this moment. They're actually just grabbing the data. Let's delete stuff we don't need. And essentially, and we would have to invoke a method to return a list of apps not related to our model. We can probably just create one of these, right? Oh no, we need a build context. Actually, there's no build context in isolated world, right? Let me double check that that's true. There's no context unless we build a widget. And if we build a widget for a build context, it doesn't really do anything. It kind of just adds a lot of plumbing that we don't need. What we would need from our app is the list of blocked apps. Let's see, at this point when it's inactive, hidden, paused, canceled. So that's the order, so hidden, paused, canceled. Okay, so it should save everything. So let's choose maybe like schedule list. Yeah, let's do schedule list. We're just trying to see if we can get some values here. I'm waiting for this thing. Okay, so second period task started. Like this started, but it didn't call back. I'm pretty sure that um, that I don't even need to use a, uh, a phone. I'm pretty sure I could use an emulator. So we're gonna try this out. This is probably gonna crash my program, but we ball. Okay, so this is working now. We have to do two things. One, we have to go into our settings menu and go into our applications apps and this one let's turn on notifications let's go back here and let's reset this and there you go now we see all of the notifications well this is clearly not working i'm pretty sure if i printed this right here if i did this i mean we can we can find out pretty quickly if uh this updated with a refresh yeah that is from the android app that's annoying I don't see a null statement. Oh, here. Hidden, paused, null. Why does it keep doing that? Where Where is the sound coming from? I'm pretty sure it's through this. Okay, so this does work. This is grabbing the profile. Why does it keep ringing like that? What is happening? Oh, here we go. Later. All right, let's see here. It's null again. I wonder why it's doing that. Yeah, these definitely need a await statement. But the await statement shouldn't bother this. See schedule list and it has a schedule. So now if I do this, it should now show a scheduled list. Okay, so personal profile is the thing that gives it because personal profile is a string that holds all the other properties. Try doing this. Let's refresh this, see if that works. We're running this, this forward. Let's see if this is still null. Hopefully it's not. No, it is null. Dang. Yeah, this is null. It's an isolated environment. In order to make preference lookup via get, synchronous uses a cache, which is normally updated. Usually this is implementation detail that does not. You should call reload on the instance from it to update its cache with any external changes. If this is problematic. Okay, so apparently you could do reload. And if this doesn't work, that's totally okay. We'll just have to shift a lot of the method calls and everything in the actual isolate here or a virtual machine. Let's see, it's still no, yeah. So this isn't gonna work. Okay, cool. Right, so how do you communicate between them? We can probably communicate between them through some fancy way here. 
So spawn isolate port.send. I don't always use ChatGPT, but sometimes I do. ChatGPT or Gemini, just any, any AI conversation model if I need help. But for the most part, I find it a lot more natural to look things up on Stack Overflow, Medium, and GitHub repos. The answers aren't exactly what I want because I feel like there's a certain way to ask conversations sometimes. Fortunately, it provides a better way, a simpler way, which is a high level to execute a function and isolate and receive the result. I was thinking like maybe I should be storing all of this information in a database, but that's just a lot of data. Pretty much there is data cached in our main thread right here. There has to be a way, by the way, to rename these so they look different. But pretty much one of these call stacks in main is our main thread. And then the other two are virtual machine threads that are created that are in isolated environments. And I'm trying to get information from the main thread. I'm trying to get data from the main thread, which is saved. It's it's supposed to be saved in disk um, using a shared preference, which is like a, a data storage plugin. And I'm trying to pull it in to a virtual machine, but it doesn't seem to be working at all. Communicate from different engines is needed in this situation. Currently I solved this problem by starting an HTTP service. Oh, that's kind of smart. HTTP requests in our app. I mean, as long as it's all local, it doesn't matter, right? They're close to working on it but it's not working yet. We should probably move this out because this is going to get very noisy. I don't know if VM entry points need to be in the same file as main. I also don't think it has to be called callback dispatcher. Let's just make a new folder and we'll deal with everything else later, right? This repository is getting kind of lit. It has so many sections. This is going to be background task. I wonder how I shift in between uh in between files on VS code. What we could just do something like this. Uh, we can save this. We can put this in here. I don't think we need shared preferences right now. It's supposed to do this every five seconds. Do we want to instantiate an app list every five seconds? But we can do this for now. Okay. We're gonna take out debugging. We don't need that. What is this? This is also for debugging, don't need that. We should also remove that from the main function as well, but, and I guess we can do this. And that pretty much solves that. All right, so with this logic, we need to send over the list of block apps. We should really have all of this be in uh, the callback, right? This should be one function. It should be, honestly. We can put it here for now. Void, trigger, or um, init, background thread, that background task, callback dispatcher, parallel thread, or background thread. And then we can kind of take things from there once things are working. All right, this looks pretty good. We should add a comment to just say initializes uh, background tasks that pull up to date usage data for apps on a device and determines up to date usage data for apps on a device and determines if an overlay should be triggered. Now this all depends on one thing. It depends on overlay main. Like where is overlay main called? Okay, so it's only called there which means that it's tied directly to the third party plugin, which means that it should be okay that we're not calling overlay main because we'll call it through flutter overlay window or whatever it is. And then the next thing to do, first we need to see if blocked apps gets passed in. I mean, I guess like the logic is here, except this doesn't really, I guess we'll do it underneath here because we're trying to replicate that. Um, Something similar to converting the JSON object that we get into a list that we can use. So the first thing we need is our personal profile or our user profile that we're passing through. And that'll be here. And locked app list is going to be just going to be a list, a list of profile apps. It says we can just cast it. So we'll try this out. Okay, so this does work because of strings, which means that it's not being converted properly, but this still isn't being okay. So clearly this is a this is a joke because profile app we made it so that the string when it is converted to a string it converts package name and then if this doesn't work then i assume it's because the local variable is being wiped this is working we don't need anything else to be honest all we really need is a list of app names and this is good because we can just check this list to see if it's available there's definitely some ingrained code that needs to be ran when the Application is launched. Seems a little weird, but uh, platform specific code. All right, let's see if this runs 
It seems like it seems like background task callback isn't being called at all. All right, let's check it out. Let's see if this works. Worker result failure for work. Tried calling map closure dynamic string. All right, so this fails. Let's try a reload or a, a hot restart, I should say. But it doesn't because it still says it's trying to call a map. Uh, tried calling cache string. Okay, that clearly doesn't work. See, this is why I hate using this. It's kind of weird that this doesn't work unless I completely stop it. We're getting there. It's a conversion. This is kind of frustrating. For some reason, even though this is returning a map string dynamic, it's still doing some type of detection to see what primitive type we're sending to our map. And it's just not making it easy to cast things easier. This will probably work. Flutter, how to convert a string that represents an array into a list of strings. Okay, so this is kind of hacky. We have a string that represents an array, but it also ended up taking the brackets and I was trying to find a way to do it properly, like to convert it, convert a string that represents an array. I don't think there's a way to actually remove the brackets. What we're gonna do instead is just manually take out the braces and that would naturally make this work. This is a list of strings, so you don't see two braces here. And this is just pumping out every time. We check if it's empty. If it's not, we do this. And either way, we're just printing out the block. App. Well, we're not printing it out. We're using it in this uh, for loop check. But yeah, this would, um, this logic works fine because the only time we're worried about updates to this blocked app list, but the only way to update it is by going back into our app. And if you go back into the app and you background it again, it cancels all of the, the backlogs of background threads and it restarts them. This is good enough, right? So this is all working now. I feel like this is a good place to end for now. We did pretty good today. We hit a huge milestone, which I'm very happy about. Again, I appreciate you guys. If you're tuning in for the first time and you haven't been a part of the channel or the community yet, then feel free to subscribe so you, you can join the next stream that I do and uh, you could see all the content. Hopefully I, I create more stuff that'll help you guys out. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for coming.